Okay, so today we are going to talk about The Left Hand of Darkness. So this is the first book that I've read out of the books that I'm reading for this Adam Savage sci-fi project that I'm taking on right now. Altogether, I'm going to read eight books, and if you want to see the introductory video to that, I'll make sure to link it in the cards above and in the description box below. I chose this book a little bit at random. It's actually a book that I picked up on Kindle around Christmas time. It was on sale at the time and I did not plan on doing this reading project quite then. I just saw it on sale and I was looking for good sci-fi books and so I chose it. I'd actually planned on reading Dune first for this project because they are in the process of making a movie for it, but after reading the first chapter I decided to put that one aside for a book or two. So I'm going to have a spoiler free section as well as a spoilery section. The spoiler free section will include a brief summary and a few reasons why you might like this book and a few reasons why you might not like it. And then in the spoilery section I'll dig into the plot a little bit more and talk in depth about what I liked and didn't like about this book. So this book follows Genry I. He is an envoy from another planet and he has come to the planet Winter seeking diplomatic relationships with them. I believe that the group of planets that Genry is from has 88 planets within their interplanetary diplomatic relationship is somewhere in the 80s and winter is on the far reaches of the galaxy and they want to establish ties with it on the planet of winter the humanoid species is androgynous for the majority of the month and then for a couple of days once a month they take on either gender so that they can procreate the book picks up after Ginry has been on winter for two years he's established a relationship of some sort with the prime minister of the first kingdom that he's come to the prime minister's name is estrogen and he is in the process of seeking counsel with that king to establish the actual relationship with them. He is able to talk to the king pretty quickly. However, the king rejects diplomatic relationships. Ginry then has to go to another country and everything that follows is his story following this initial rejection. While this book sounds like an adventure story, ultimately I think that it's one about friendship and relationship and about genuinely learning to love and accept each other for who we are. A few reasons I think you'd like this story include the first one being if you enjoy stories that are about growth, change, and learning to love each other, I think this is a really good one. Estrovin and Ginry and I have to overcome a lot of differences in order to have a friendship together, and the friendship that they form is really beautiful and full of really seeking to understand each other and overcome their differences together. Another reason you might like this book is if you like classical writing. This book has an alternating style that switches between a narrative and dialogue, and so if you like that style, you might like this book. It reminded me of Lord of the Rings a little bit. However, the sections of narrative are not quite as long as the sections of narrative in Lord of the Rings, and the dialogue is interspersed much more regularly. Plus, Lord of the Rings uses a plot device where dialogue is used to help tell the story, whereas in Left Hand of Darkness, the dialogue is purely c characters communicating. No storytelling happens through dialogue, except in characters filling in each other's histories to each other. If you like sci-fi that's set on a single planet, you might like this book. No space travel happens during it. Also, if you like sci-fi with political intrigue, you might like this book, as the whole plot revolves around Ginry I looking for a diplomatic relationship with the people of Winter. Another reason you might like this book is if you like first contact books. This book doesn't follow the moment of first contact, as it picks up two years after Ginry has been on Winter. However, this book does explore how the people respond to Ginry and a lot of the reactions that they have. A few reasons you might not like this book include, well, the writing style. It really does have sections of really long narrative that goes on for several pages and then short dialogue that's just like one conversation or two and then back to really long narrative. The dialogue is not quite as immersed into the narrative as a lot of modern books are. Please remember though that this book was written in the 1960s so that's not surprising. Like I said, the writing style did remind me of Lord of the Rings, which makes sense since The Return of the King was published in 1954 and The Left Hand of Darkness was published in 1969. I already referenced some of the differences between these, but if you know that you don't like that writing style, you're probably not going to like this book very much. Even though Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite books, the writing style still bothers me a little bit and I also had a little bit of trouble getting into this book. So it's just something to be aware of. Another reason you might not like this book is if you prefer a lot more action. 
Not a lot of the action that takes place is actually documented on the pages, and that that is documented only takes a couple of paragraphs to describe. Some of the action that happens isn't even on the page. You just pick up after that has happened. The majority of what you follow in the book is the story about the world as well as dialogue between the characters. So if you look for action-heavy books, this is probably not the book for you. Okay, so that concludes the spoiler-free section. Make sure to click off if you don't want this book spoiled for you, but stick around if you've already read it or don't mind spoilers. I want to start with a couple things about the plot that surprised me. The main things are that this book is weirdly divided into what seems like two acts. The first half of the book revolves around Genry Ai's experience in the first kingdom and initial experience in the second country that he goes to, and then ends when ends or I guess concludes when he's shipped off to prison. The entire second act of this book is the story arc of Ai and Estrogen traveling from the prison after Estrogen. Uh, rescues I and heading all the way back to the country that Estrovin's from. I found it a little bit odd. The pacing was hard to follow and the fact that it was divided into two sections like that, it I just felt like those sections didn't really go together very well. Even though Act 2 concludes with Estrovin sacrificing himself so that I can get the second hearing with the king and ultimately form a diplomatic relationship with this country and, and world, it was just it felt like such a disjointed way to get there. I picked up the book because I was interested in the political intrigue and the world, and instead you spend half of it just trekking across barren wasteland. Now, I did enjoy that journey as a journey by itself. There was a lot of really interesting stuff that happened there, and I really liked seeing Genry Ida and Estrovin's relationship really form. I really appreciated seeing their friendship deepen and being able to watch them come to an understanding and appreciation for each other and just really genuine acceptance even though they're completely different species who struggle to understand each other. However, as much as I liked the long winter trek and I liked watching the friendship develop, the long trek just felt like it didn't really fit into the story. Maybe it just didn't work for me. I don't know. I can't really decide what about it I didn't like but it just wasn't my favorite thing. One thing that I thought was done really well is watching everyone react to Ginry Ai, especially the second country that Ai goes to. There's a conversation that he has with the rulers of that country where he talks about the fact that he is here to build this relationship with them, and he mentions the fact that he has a spaceship in orbit with other people of his race from his home planet orbiting around the star currently the sun. And when he says that, the people in that country get really upset and that's why you get shipped off to prison. I thought it was very realistic and slightly terrifying watching the people react to Genry Ai like that. And as scary as that was, that felt like a realistic portrayal of what happens when people are afraid, especially when a bunch of afraid people get together and really emphasize each other's fears. As I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of Estrovin and I's relationship and the friendship that forms between the two of them, and I really was invested in watching that progress. The dialogue that does happen during the long winter trek in the second half of the book mostly revolves around them learning to understand each other and appreciate each other, and I thought that that was a very good way to highlight the necessity to really learn about each other and understand, and the fact that it takes a lot of work. I Estrovin and I both have to work at being friends. It doesn't come easily to them, and they have to choose to put their differences aside and seek to form relationship together. Ultimately, that's why I think this book is a story about friendship. The highlight of this book is the friendship between I and Estrovin. That's what kept me invested, even when the second arc of this book took a totally different path than the first. There were a lot of reasons that I struggled to connect with this book, most of which are just the writing style and the fact that we do have two very different acts in the book. Act one, where we are in the cities seeking political uh, relationship with different people, and act two that follows just the whole long winter trek across 800 miles of ice to get back home. In spite of not really liking those, I can see why a lot of people really love this book. I liked it okay. There were things I liked about it and things that I didn't but I can still recognize why it's so many people's favorites and why it's a classic and a staple in the genre. It explores fear and prejudice very well and realistically portrays what happens when people are prejudiced and afraid of each other. Also, like I said, the friendship is phenomenal and I think it's a really good look at what happens when we're willing to put our differences aside and care for each other. 
I'm sure there's so much more to this book that I haven't picked up on, and I'm sure there are a lot of themes that people have expounded on a lot more fully than I've been able to. These are just the thoughts that I've had as I've read this book and things that I've personally picked up. It's been a long time since I diagnosed a book deeply or wrote any <laughs> form of paper about a book and analyzed it for an English class, so I'm sure that I've missed several things. However, that's everything that stuck out to me and a good summation of my thoughts about it. Like I said, at the end of each one of these videos, I'm going to be telling you what book I'm reading next. Originally, I planned to pick up the three body problem, which is right here. And then after that, take another attempt at Dune. However, my ebook for Dune came in four weeks earlier than it was supposed to. So I may have to swap the order of those and read Dune first so that the ebook doesn't have to return to the library before I get a chance to finish it. The wait list was 12 weeks long when I signed up to read it, and so I really don't want to have to wait a long time to read this again. Both of Three Body Problem and Dune are on my TBR for May, and both of them fulfill prompts in medieval Athon, which I'm reading along to. <laughs> so I definitely plan on, at this point in time, finishing both books in May. Either way, I'll definitely be posting the next video soon. You may or may not see me reading one of them in my reading vlog along the way, and I'm excited to dive into both of them in this next month. Until next time, I hope that you are having a wonderful day and taking really good care of yourself and loving the people around you. Let's be a little bit more like Henry I and Estrabin and really care for each other, especially with everything going on right now. Hope you have a great day.